Today we're going we're gonna to be talking about godly leadership uh, moves people by teaching and not telling. Now this is probably one of the most important um, topics that, that I believe uh, needs to be shared and communicated when it comes to leadership. So I'm happy you're watching this one and I just pray that uh, God just speaks to your heart through this uh, time in relation to your understanding of what godly leadership needs to look like more and more. Um, okay, so I'm going to read a couple passages here, and I'm, 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 they might not all make perfect sense, and I don't want to just like get into all of them, but as I, I want to read them, and then we start talking about our topic, I, I hope that they kind of come to light. So keep them in mind, maybe uh, you know, kind of write them down or whatever on, on the side notes, so they can go back to them and, and look at them. Uh, but uh, I just want to read through a couple of, the, of these verses because I, I think you see this theme. I'm going to start this, though, before I jump in, I'm going to start this with saying this. Jesus Christ is a leader and king. Jesus Christ is king of kings and lord of lords. He is the leader, and he's a leader that we follow. But how does he get us to follow? Right? How does he get us to follow? How does he get us to, does he tell, does he ask, or does he teach? Okay, does he tell, does he ask, or does he teach? So that's, that's what I want you to think about. Okay, so uh, Luke 6.40, Luke 6.40. The student is not above the teacher, but everyone who is fully trained will be like their teacher. Okay, so now if, if we're thinking about uh, that great leaders teach, okay, so great leaders teach. Godly leaders move people by teaching, not telling, okay? So godly leaders need to teach. Now, if you think about the teacher and the leader, and if you kind of put them together, I'm going to read you that verse again. The follower is not above the leader, okay? The follower is not above the leader, but every follower who is fully trained will look like their leader. The student is not above the teacher, but everyone who is fully trained will be like their teacher. <clears throat> okay? Uh, 1 Thessalonians 2.14 For you, brothers and sisters, became imitators of God's churches in Judea, which are in Christ Jesus. You suffered from your own people the same things those churches suffered from the Jews. Paul writes in 1 Corinthians 11.1 1, Follow my example. Be imitators of me. As I follow the example of Christ. Jesus isn't just telling. Paul isn't just telling. There's something else going on here. Okay? There's, there's a... There's a uh, an we're supposed to imitate. We're supposed to follow. We're supposed to uh, follow the example of. We're supposed to see. Look. Look. Watch. And then do the same. Okay? John 13. 14 to... 14 and 15. Now that I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also should wash one another's feet. I have set you an example that you should do as I have done for you. So Jesus Christ goes and he washes his disciples' feet and then he says basically, do you see what I've done? I'm giving you an example of what you should be doing, how you should act in the same way. As I love you, follow my example and love each other. As I serve you, follow my example and serve each other, right? He's not just telling. This is what you do. Do this. Do that. Do this. Do that. He's showing them. He's being an example. Pay attention to that. And then Romans 8, uh, 29. Does Jesus tell, ask, or teach? Okay, and then how does he teach? How does he teach? And we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. For those God foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed, to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. Okay, so God is looking for us to be conformed, to be changed towards being like Christ, to the image of Christ. Not just, God's not looking for us just to mimic Jesus, okay? He's not looking for us to copy the things Jesus did. He's looking for us to follow the image of Jesus, but also 
to do what Jesus does, but also to be conformed by it. Or to be conformed and then to understand why we do it. There's a conform, we're, 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 we're to be changed, and there's tons of verses in Scripture about that. Okay? So Jesus was our Lord and Savior. He is our leader, and he leads by, what is it? Telling, asking, or teaching. He leads by teaching. He doesn't just tell, and his purpose in teaching was not simply to be a philosopher. He, he didn't come as rabbi, simply to be a type of philosopher. Jesus came as a teacher because God knows, Jesus knows, because he made us, that that's how you lead best. So, poor leaders tell, good leaders ask, and great leaders teach. Great leaders teach. Now, can you lead by telling? Can you be a poor leader and lead by telling? Absolutely. But, but you need, in that case, you're going to need to have a fair bit of power over the people you're telling. Why? People can, you can lead people by just telling them what to do, but the problem is, is that um, you're going to need to pay them or you're going to need to have some sort of government, uh, military, you know, force that tells them what to do. Uh, you, you can tell people stuff. And you can lead by telling, but what happens often is if you lead by telling two things. Number one, people don't like to be told what to do. No adult loves being told what to do. No kid loves just to be told what to do. Now, there are times you need to tell people stuff. But what happens as a teller, if you're, you can tell that you're a, a leader who's a teller, or even a manager who's a teller, by this. You have lots of turnover in your organization. You have lots of turnover. People aren't willing to work with you very long. They'll work with you some, but chances are they won't work with you very long. They'll either try to move up the ladder past you, or they will leave and go join a different organization. And it won't matter if they love the, they love the church they're in, or they love the organization they're in. It doesn't matter if they love the vision, They'll just go do that vision somewhere else, right? Or they'll try to get higher up in the ladder past you so that they don't have to be told what to do. Or they'll quit, right? More often than that, you can tell that they're a leader who is not a good teacher and a leader who doesn't ask well or a leader who asks but still tells, you know what I'm saying? Right? Like we all know people that ask a question but you can tell that they're telling you something to do or they're telling you something, right? Uh, kind of like the wife who, who asks her husband something, but you can tell that she's telling him to do it. Hey, honey, did you uh, change the, the tires on the car yet? My wife never does that, so I'm not talking about my wife. But, I mean, you, you, you probably have known when your wife, if that has happened. You know, like, have you done this yet? It's a question, but it's also a command, right? Uh, so, poor leaders tell. Poor leaders tell. Uh, and no one likes to be told, right? And so people in time will just leave. Uh, the second thing that will happen is in, in order for that, the tell leader to keep people, uh, they will have to pay them lots. They'll have to pay them more. People will never be satisfied with what they're getting. Their people will always feel like uh, they need more restitution, okay? They need more higher wage. They need better holiday time. They need more. Uh, if you're a teller kind of leader, your people will always be wanting more from you. They'll be wanting more time off. They'll be wanting higher wages. They'll be they'll be wanting, um, you know, better office equipment, better a better car. They'll be wanting. Their demands will always be just more and more and more and more. Likely, uh, if that's how your your people are, likely you're a teller leader. Number two, good leaders. Good leaders, not great leaders though. Good leaders ask. Now, even a great leader from time to time will have to ask. We all need to ask. And we need to ask like we're actually asking. We're not ask like we're telling. That's still in the telling group, okay? That's still in the telling. So good leaders will ask, and from time to time, you'll just need to ask people, right? You'll need to be vulnerable and say, you know what? Vulnerability is a part of asking, recognizing that if they say no, you're kind of screwed, but they, they, you, you, you still need to give them that opportunity to say no. So good leaders ask, and you ask people to do stuff. 
You ask them to come along. Okay? But great leaders teach. Great leaders will teach people what matters most. Great leaders will teach people so that those people become, they take in those values, they take in that understanding, they take in that vision, and it becomes their own, right? Remember what that passage said in Luke? That a teacher, uh, that the student is not greater than the teacher. The teacher is still greater. But when a, te when a student is fully trained, they will look like their teacher, right? Right? They will, it, a person, what it's saying there is basically, a person will, shouldn't be able to t tell the difference. If, if that student is fully trained, they will look like their teacher, not just be able to uh, do things like their teacher. I mean, in, in terms of, sorry, they will look like their teacher. That means like, they will literally look like them. They will live like them. They will act like them. Okay. So a student is fully trained when he looks like his teacher. And I think that as a, a leading, as a leading teacher, as a teacher who leads, right? You need to recognize that your people are fully trained when they look like you. That means if you stay late because something needs to get done and you're just like super passionate about the new thing that's happening in your organization. Uh, and you're just like, oh man, this is so awesome. We need to stay late. Your people will look like you if you're training them, if you're teaching them. They'll stay late when you stay late. They'll give where you give. They'll pour out their heart where you pour out your heart, right? If you're teaching them, they will look like you. Now, I think most owners of businesses would love it if more of their people had the same kind of investment in their company as they do, right? Of course you would. Right? Where, they're, they, they, where your people felt like owners as much as you feel like an owner. And it just, this has to work. And this, you want to just, you want to, you know, give it your all. It's become your baby. Right? What if all your people had that? Your people will only have that. Your people will, will only get there if you teach as you lead. You're a leading teacher. You're a teaching leader. That's the only way that happens doesn't happen any other way. But if you do teach and train them up and they are become fully trained as you lead them, as you teach them, right? They're going to look like you in a lot of ways. Okay, so then, so then how do we teach, right, becomes the, the question. How do we teach? Now, in the leadership, we, there's this thing called the pyramid of influence. And I have it up here. Okay, so the pyramid of influence. Now, at, what's the, at the bottom is, the bottom of the, is modeling, okay, is modeling. And the modeling is the biggest influence you will have on, on the people in your organization. There we go. This is the biggest influence. What you do, what they see you do, will matter most. So you're teaching your people by simply what you're doing day to day. You're teaching. And that's the biggest influence that you have on them. They are looking at you. If you're a leader and if you're, that's part of your organization, they're looking at you. Whether you're a dad or a mom, probably was seen most clearly, right? Or if you're a, a business owner or, and, and you have four or five employees, what they see you do is the biggest influence in their life in terms of your teaching, what you're teaching them, okay? The second, the second biggest influence in your kind of influencing others, influ uh, influencing others in your kind of hope to, to lead them, to train them, okay, is relationship. Relationship, right? Great leaders know their people. Right? You get to know them. You have a relationship with them. You spend time with them. Now, you spending time with them becomes, now pay attention to this, your relationship, okay, amongst other things, we'll talk about them, but your relationship gives them a place to connect your teaching, which is your top one here, your teaching. I don't know why I did that. I just hope it's dark enough. I'm hoping this, that you can see this. That's why I'm kind of trying to make it thicker. 
You're teaching with your modeling, right? Your words and your actions, right? And your relationship gives them, gives, gives you that kind of that, it's a means, it's a model, it's, it's the, it's the, it's the, the, the vehicle. Spending time with them in relationship, right? Gives, gives them an opportunity to, um, to watch you modeling what you're teaching. And so then, um, so this is what the, the leader does, right? This is, the leader teaches, they have relationship, and they model. But in the same, on the other side of, the, of that, kind of that influence, right? What happens to the, to the follower, right? This is what they hear, right? This is what they see. And this is what they feel, right? So you're, 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 you're connecting with kind of the whole person. The follower sees what you're modeling. You model, they see it. The, your relationship with them, right? You endeavor to engage in relationship, they feel it. You endeavor to, endeavor to teach, you, you, and, and to, 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 to show them. And this is specifically connected to words they hear, okay? Now, um, I always like talking about alignment, right? If your teaching doesn't align with your modeling, what's going to happen? Right? What's going to happen? Your teaching doesn't, it's going to cause confusion over here. What they see and what they hear is going to be different. They're going to see that as a inconsistency. Right? They're going to see it as an inconsistency. That inconsistency is going to be automatically connected to character flaw. Or moral... Right? Remember? Because we, we, we talked about that before, right? A character flaw or moral failure, right? Because we have the um, we have the fundamental attribution error, or we have the uh, correspondence bias, right? So automatically, automatically, if there's inconsistency between your what you're telling them, what you're saying as a, as you're trying to teach them, as you're trying to say, hey guys, you know what? <clears throat> I want you working super hard. I want you working super hard, and. Um, and I want you guys giving us your best at work. Guys, we need your best at work. But then you're there, you show up at 10, you go home at 2, um, you take extra holidays, um, you're always away from the office. Maybe you're working, right? But they don't see that. They don't know what you're doing away from the office, right? Or maybe you're not at the job site. I'll be honest with you. I used to struggle with this with my dad for with a little bit as a, as a young person. Now, I didn't understand. My dad, my dad works crazy hard, okay? Um, but I struggled with the fact that me and my brother and some of the other guys that we would be kind of leading and, uh, and, and working with, we would be on the job working and dad would be at the office doing stuff. And I knew that he was doing stuff, but it just bugged me, right? It bugged me uh, because he's the leader. He should be here, right? Uh, truth be told, uh, me, and this, uh, me and this other guy... Uh, we were doing this renovation project once, and we were, we were staying up till like probably 11, 12, 1 o'clock at night, just working, trying to get this done. We only had a, a certain amount of window, and, uh, and, and there was, a, there was a, a time where it needed to be finished because uh, we were, they were going to be using this building. And so we were working just so hard, and it just, it just killed me that um, some of the leader of the department that we were kind of working for, uh, they, would be go they would go home at 5. Uh, and the, 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 the boss of the whole uh, organization was going, would go home at 5 or 6 uh, in, in the evening. Uh, they would show up at, uh, you know, uh, coffee break when we had coffee breaks uh, and, and kind of have coffee break with us. But for the most part, um, you know, they still went on holidays. Um, uh, and uh, we were using some of our holidays to try to get this project done. That kills organizational passion and fire. That kills your people. That kills your people, right? That kills your people. Uh, that kills your organization. 
Okay, so um, <coughs> um, what happens when your teaching is inconsistent to your modeling is that it creates confusion and what is considered inconsistency, right? The problem that you're having likely, I don't want to get into this, but is, is the value thing. That your values are, you're not paying attention to your own values, okay? They're going to see that as inconsistent. So that's the pyramid of influence, and that's a, a huge part of how we, how we teach. And it's, and it's important for us to recognize that but how we act, what we're doing, what we actually do, teaches. It teaches, it shows. Uh, our relationship with them, the relationship with that we have with them, um, connects to their feelings and their emotions. And I always say, um, if you're leading, bring your people home, not your work. Bring your people home. Not your work, right? If we're, if we're wise to it, we can lead by modeling. We can lead within relationship and we can lead in what we teach and say.